Diane Selstrom. I'm a speech and language therapist and I manage the ENT team uh, based at the Freeman Hospital. I specialise in head and neck cancer. We need to be creating and developing a culture where research is embedded into everyday practice. It's everybody's business and for me it's about nurturing and developing the talent of the workforce as well because um, we know that having a happier workforce leads to sort of improved recruitment and retention, lower sickness absence rates, improved productivity, it creates innovation, improved creativity and ultimately that will lead to patient, patients with better outcomes and improved patient care which is obviously the, the end goal of all of this. I think one of the main challenges is getting the backfill, so the awards that come with funded backfill are much easier to manage but often they're, they're short periods of time so trying to think creatively about making sure that the service continues to run quite smoothly. I think another challenge is the stability within the team so if people are coming and going sort of on a frequent basis that can disrupt that stability so it's important to think about that. For the person going off and doing the research it's also making sure that they remain a valued member of the team and, and making sure that they still know that they have a lot to contribute. I think thinking creatively about backfill, um, being open-minded and trying to reframe some of the challenges as opportunities. For example, um, just being able to get new people into the team. They, new people always bring fresh energy and, and fresh ideas, which is always a positive thing. Collaborating with other sort of regions or other managers who do a similar job to think about what you can try and create um, with, with small pots of money to make them into a more attractive post. I suppose one example would be when I, had, I work in quite a very small team, there's only sort of seven or eight clinicians, but at one point two of them wanted to go off half time to, to do a master's, which would have posed quite a challenge, but we managed to put, combine their two vacancies to create an attractive post and skill mix it to attract people from outside of the area into the post, um, who ended up becoming a permanent member of staff. And I think had they not gone off to do that, we, we might not have been able to attract that person from outside the area. So that was a really positive experience. I think the benefits have been the, the collaborations and the, the, the linking and networking that we've been able to establish um, within the organisation but also in the country and for some people worldwide as well, uh, not just within speech and language therapy but we, we've kind of connected with people in academia that we might not have even known existed if we, we didn't have these research links um, and they just bring in so many different ideas and, and support networks as well and, and different ways of thinking and I think just having a, a, a really strong resilient workforce who, who, who feel passionately about what they do which ultimately you know, transfers into the, the patient care that they provide. The other main big benefit is about the profile of the department and raising that profile at a sort of local, national and international level which makes it much more an attractive place to work and, and sort of reap the benefits when you are have got posts to advertise. Definitely think about it. I would say talk to people, you know, talk to people who are, who are doing it, who are active just locally. There's always sort of solutions to the problems, you know, that there's never been anything that's insurmountable. There might be challenges, but there's always ways around them. And, and the benefits far outweigh the sort of the challenges that are posed. So just start some conversations. Mm -hmm.